you can get a virtual assistant. It is possible. And you're gonna you're still gonna need one a month to three months from now. You may as well start working on these things in the meantime so that when the one month or the two month or the three month mark comes, then you're like, yeah, I'm I'm like super ready and this is why, because I have all of these things together. Let's talk about what you should have in place before you bring on a virtual assistant. And I'm speaking from my own personal experience being a virtual assistant that a lot of people could not keep long term. Now, before I get into the three things that I'm going to share with you today, I want you to consider what phase of business that you're in right now, because I know that most of the time when people are really struggling with, you know, figuring out what they could even have a virtual assistant do, what things they have to have in place before they bring someone on, because having a whole other human involved in your business that has mostly been all just you wearing all the hats and doing all the things can be overwhelming. First of all, this is targeted toward people who are solopreneurs don't have a huge budget budget and we're going to talk about that in real numbers in a bit and you are not at the place where you can go out and hire an agency for thousands of dollars if you are at that point then don't even bother listening to any more that i have to say because you should just go to your own business coach go to your mastermind you're probably going to outsource your social media right if you really like social media and you really want to pay thousands of dollars to have an agency do it, then go to the person whose social media content you enjoy, wherever that happens to be, and see if you can DM them or ask them in LinkedIn or somehow email them and ask them who their, if they would mind sharing who their person is or who their agency is and who they would recommend. Because you can just go straight to them, you don't have to like hunt around and find your own version. If you like someone's social media and you're willing to pay for it, then just ask them directly. But if that's not you, then let's pretend that you only have maybe a few hundred dollars per month. And so that's actually the first thing that I want you to know in advance and be okay with, like in your soul. So what is your throwaway budget? And can you do that for at least three months, knowing in advance that maybe you might not be happy with that person being on your team after three months of working with them? And I know that that sounds awful because like who likes to assume that they're going to waste money and that you're going to lose money or, you know, whatever. But bringing on another person and handing off work that you don't know will actually be done well is a gamble. And so this is really just your throwaway budget. How much can you budget for a gamble on a person that will likely do well, but also might not. And I want you to be okay with losing that amount of money for three months in a row, because you're not going to know for sure that that person isn't for you or is the wrong fit or is the perfect fit until a few months into the contract. And honestly, you can you can say that to them at the beginning when you're putting your contract together. You can say, I only want to do three months because I don't know how this is going to turn out. And I would love to keep you long term, but I also want both of us to have an out <laughs> if it doesn't work out. And honestly, the virtual assistant is probably going to appreciate that, whoever you end up talking to. Because the truth is that us virtual assistants, especially the good ones, we don't like everyone we work with either. And so a lot of the talk out there is like, well, you know, I get ghosted or the work is subpar or whatever when you're talking about virtual assistants, but it goes the other way. Like some clients are not super great. And so it'll be good for both of you if you know how much you're going to pay, what you want them to do. And I'll get that to that in a second, but just be committed for at least three months because you should be setting your goals in quarters on a quarterly basis anyway, but It's just good to put your money within a time bracket and know that you can't just run away as soon as it gets kind of sticky. I know that in my own experience, around week two or three is when the client usually gets scared and then they start to nitpick and then they start to second guess themselves. And so just know that you make good decisions. You're in charge of your business. You know what you need and just go in there with confidence, but with very specific expectations for what what you want them to to do. But like I said, I'll get that to that in a second because that's actually item number three. Item num- number two to, is to make sure that you know how much time you're actually spending on your business because a lot of people are really worried about 
they're worried about the money, first of all, because you don't want to waste your money. And nobody does, really. And you and your VA have this in common where you don't want to waste your time on each other either. No amount of money can make working with the wrong person or having like a nightmare project not come together by the end of the timeline worth it. And so knowing what you actually want them to do, it's important to know how long it takes you to do certain tasks. And this is kind of a, a sub note on this, but I do recommend hiring out things that you're trying to do yourself and you're just not good at it instead of like this pie in the sky. I, I've never even touched social media and I've heard that it's wonderful. So I want someone to do social media for me and it's going to be great, right? Like if you have no experience at all with Instagram and then you want to hire someone to do your Instagram for you, either get ready to pay a lot of money, like a lot of money for someone who's really good or get ready to be surprised that it's not all that it's cracked up to be because social media is a little bit of a black hole right now as far as marketing is concerned. So if you know how much time you are spending, aka wasting, on certain tasks that you know that somebody else should probably do, then it'll be easier for you to make that transition to handing them off to someone else. Because if you're spending so much time on your inbox let's say. That's an easy one. It's an inbox problem. You're subscribed to too many emails. You don't even read any of them. And so you're going in every day and you're unsubscribing from everything and trying to filter out the stuff that's from legit clients or legit leads. That is something that you can hire out. And you might think, okay, cool, I'll do that. But then at the end of the contract, when you have a totally clean inbox, you might be grateful, but you might also be a little resentful because you'll be like, dang, I paid all of that money just for them to go through my inbox. I should have just done it myself. Well, if you are already timing yourself and running a timer for any of your business tasks, then you know how much time you just saved yourself. You know how much energy and how draining it is to go through your email inbox. And so it's easier to remember why you did it in the first place because there's always that after project regret or there's that moment before you renew your contract with your virtual assistant where you're like, maybe not, you know, maybe I'm okay and I can handle it from here on out. And, you know, we all know that that's not the case, but it's just our brains trying to be safe and trying to survive in this, in this world that we have. And that and usually involves saving as much money as we can and not giving it away to anyone for any reason, even if it's a helpful reason. So at least, I, I don't know, for let's say like two weeks, run a timer and keep track of all of the things that you do for your business. And at the end of it, tally up how much time that you spend on your business. It may be a lot. It may be much less than you thought. And you'll, you'll know by the end what your workflow is like, and you'll have a better idea of what it might look like if you bring a whole other human into the picture, right? If you just don't have enough work to give them because you realize that you're not actually doing that much work. And I'm sorry if that's the case. I don't mean to be like, you know, bossing you around or anything or, or hitting you hard with this, but it's just, that's the truth. And I know that that's the case with me, myself sometimes. Sometimes I'm complaining about my business and how hard it is. And I'm like, oh, I haven't really actually done anything. I'm just talking. I'm just talking to myself and getting frustrated. And so having a timer, having real numbers to look at that are not money because you're probably not paying yourself anyway, it helps. Okay. Try it at least for two weeks for longer than that. If you can do it, do it for an entire month and just keep track of how much time you're spending on your business, then it'll really help you when you go out and find your first virtual assistant. And finally, you probably guessed this already, but the third thing that you need to have in place is a list of deliverables that you would like. And this is this is tricky because I know that a lot of people say you can hire a virtual assistant for so many hours a week and they can do so much for your business. And personally, I don't like that because I don't think any of us, you know, entrepreneur or corporate or stay at home person or anything. I don't think that any of us should be valuing ourselves and our time in hour increments. That's not how it works. That's not how any human body works. Like we shouldn't be on the 24 hour cycle either, but that's a feminist problem. <laughs> but in, you know, overall across the board, we're not hourly creatures. We're just, we're, let's, let's get rid of that. 
But aside from that being a personal, like, political stance for me, it's going to be a lot easier for you if you go into a virtual assistant contract paying for the deliverable that they're going to have at the end of it. Or if it's one of those things where you need them to to meet up with you for a meeting every week or something like that. That's not necessary, by the way, but some people need that. If you need that, then that's a deliverable. The deliverable is weekly meeting, weekly agenda, weekly list of completed tasks. And that's just the admin part. We, maybe your deliverable is created I'm going back to the social media thing again, but create, uh, let's see, write, write rough drafts and create them in Canva and schedule them to go out on a schedule that we agreed upon. And so all three of those stages should be outlined and you should know when you want them and your expectations for what they should look like. And then have the process in mind and written down of what's going to happen if you don't like what they come up with for you. Like if they give you the rough draft by the end of week two and you're not happy with it, then you can say, okay, we're going to delay the second step, which is you know the actual creation of the assets. And we're going to talk about it instead. And then, you know, how does that play into your expectations and your schedule? So knowing what you want, the actual deliverables, no matter how long it takes them, no matter how many days or hours or whatever, what is it that you want in hand and make sure that you're ready to pay for that while also keeping in mind that it's not going to be perfect because no one can read your mind. Even the best virtual assistants will need some time to get to know you and to get your voice down and create things that they know are going to be approved by you more quickly. And the only way they do that is by messing up a few times. And it's not even messing up. It's just like they don't know you. So they're going to need your approval and you're going to have to be specific on what you want, what you don't want. That's where like branding guides really come in handy if you worked with a branding expert, because then you can point at page three of the branding guide says don't do this. And then it's just a done deal. Okay, so reviewing all of this, first one was you need to have a throwaway budget for at least three months. Know what you want to spend and what you're willing to lose in case it's not a good fit over the next three months. I mean, if you want to shorten it, then you can. I'm not saying that you have to stick with a virtual assistant that you don't like for 90 days, but you should have the budget for one. (laughs) If that makes sense. So that was the first one. The second one is to get in get in the habit of timing yourself. Do it for at least two to four weeks so that you know exactly how much time you are spending on your business. I know it's going to be tedious at first because who likes to run a timer when you're on the go and doing things from your phone? The answer is don't do things from your phone so often. But you know, try to establish some kind of routine for yourself so that you know what your schedule is. You know how much time you're putting into your business and then you can feel that difference when you bring someone on to do the things that you designate in item number three which is the deliverables the specific deliverable project-based results that you expect from your virtual assistant exactly what you want how many of it that you want the quality what it should look like what it should sound like where it should be saved or emailed to by what date you know all of the specifics knowing exactly what you want by the end will make it a whole lot easier to find somebody who's better fit i hope that you found that helpful if you need help with the very next step honestly these three things get them under your belt over the next month or so and you'll be good to go but i do want to share with you that i have a resource that's called find your unicorn virtual assistant and it is essentially everything that you need when you sit down at your desk and you're like okay i did the things i'm ready to find a virtual assistant it has my own personal job description it has suggestions for where to find a virtual assistant that will actually fit your needs without running into every single Facebook group and asking random people. And it'll shave off literally hours of your time finding the right person to help you out with your business. So check out the links if you want to go grab that resource and get to started on these three things that I just shared with you. You can get a virtual assistant. It is possible. And you're gonna you're still going to need one a month to three months from now. You may as well start working on these things in the meantime so that when the one month or the two month or the three month mark comes then you're like, yeah, I'm, I'm like super ready and this is why, because I have all of these things together. 
if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me and we can talk about it. But yeah, I, I wish you lots of luck on your search for a virtual assistant, getting all those systems in place behind the scenes of your business. And make sure you grab that resource again. Seriously, it'll help you. Okay, I'll see you next time. Bye.